Thank you. However, you got my address. Was it early November? Whatever it was. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have my November favorites. Now I will tell you, there aren't that many products in here because honestly, I was gone for a lot of November. I did take two trips. I was in New York for a weekend and then I also went to Puerto Rico for 10 days. And honestly, I just haven't been trying out that much stuff. So I'm gonna basically do like, this is basically an October and November favorite. I didn't do an October favorites at the beginning of November at all. But I'm just gonna chat you through some of my go-to products throughout November. And I'm really excited because I'm gonna try to do Vlogmas. Now I can't promise it's gonna be uploads every single day because my mom's coming into town first of all. And secondly, I'm doing 25 days of Christmas over on Instagram where I'm doing creative looks, like creative. When I'm done with this, I gotta wipe this off and do my creative look for tomorrow. I wanna balance both of them, but I really do wanna try to upload more frequently on my youtube channel because it's kind of been neglected since like before halloween because i just prioritize instagram in that time of year anyway let me stop rambling if you're new here i would love for you to subscribe i do these kinds of videos pretty regularly and yeah let's get into it before we get into it i want to do a channel shout out i've been trying to do these every time i do a monthly favorites which hopefully will be every single month from now on but anyway my channel shout out is actually a much larger channel than mine but i still want to give her a little shout out in case any of my subscribers have never seen her you definitely want to check her out her youtube name is make me a missa i think her name is melissa i've been like binging all of her videos i absolutely love them so she does a lot of hauls first impressions reviews her review videos are so good the reason that i subscribe to her is her makeup style is totally just like mine very colorful bold look grungy and she knows how to play with eyeshadow man she really does her eyeshadow looks are so so pretty she's gorgeous i love her reviews they're very in-depth she captivates her audience that's for sure i love her channel a lot she she does a great job i love her channel a lot she she does a great job so i just wanted to shout her out real quick and now let's get into my favorite products i'm gonna start off with tools i think because i'm gonna forget to talk about these i just know i am and i just really quickly want to mention some eyeshadow brushes that i've been loving throughout well, well, actually, I got them, I think, at the beginning of October. So, yeah. For the last couple of months, I've been using them. These are from the brand called What's Up Beauty. I'm going to be honest with you guys. They sent these over to me, and I have no recollection of ever giving them my address. So, it was a little weird. If you're watching this, I apologize. <laughs> but I really don't remember giving them my address. Um, and they showed up on my doorstep, and I was like, oh, hi, what is this? And they like there was a bunch of other products, some nail polishes, an eyeshadow palette, which I haven't tried yet, but it looks so pretty. But the brushes are what caught my attention the most. This isn't all of them, but this is some of them. I don't think this is all of them. These are the ones that I like the most. And, well, I don't really use this one that much. These are the ones I like the most. These are really, really nice. They are actually made in japan they have very very sturdy handles and they're made of goat hair i'm pretty sure and if they're not then it's some other natural hair it's a natural hair brush so it's not synthetic and i've been loving that i compare these to my refer brushes all the time they're very very nice i want to say they're a little bit more affordable than refer brushes as well i've been using these like crazy i use them to create my eyeshadow look which you'll see later on when i'm talking about the eyeshadow palette that i've been loving but i really like this brush um right here this is the r106 brush and it's like a flat brush it's perfect for packing on the lid shade i also really like this r102 brush because it's a really nice like pointed definer brush and you can like get deepen out the outer corner with it and then this one is a the r103 brush and i use it for transition shades as well as this one which is a little bit bigger it's like a bigger version of this one which is the r104 brush i love these are very very good quality i've never heard of this brand and again it just like randomly showed up on my doorstep but i was like thank you However, you got my address. Speaking of eyeshadow palettes, I'm just going to talk to you about it right now since we're on the subject, you know? This is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. I've been loving it like crazy since I reviewed it in early November. Was it early November? Whatever it was. Anyway, this is a really nice palette. I'm a huge fan of Huda Beauty's bigger palettes. I do wish it would come out with more interesting color stories. They all seem to have very similar color stories. They're like mauve tones with a little bit of more deep shades. What I love about her bigger palettes are the different textures you can find in them. There are so many different formulas within this palette. The mattes are super creamy and blendable and pigmented. And you can go pretty deep with this one. I do wish it was like a deeper purple, just flat out purple. But when you do apply it, I did apply it on the outer corner today. It does kind of come across is purple especially when you're using the more like mauve tones i really like this palette a lot the shimmers are so so pretty the metallics are gorgeous again tons of different textures the only shade i could do without is this one which is the like petri dish looking shade it's like wet it's like a, a greasy feeling i hate it i did hear that somebody actually like mixed it all up in the pan and it actually came across beautifully on the lid 
I don't know if I'm gonna do that because I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess anything up. Like, I don't want to mess up the other shades. You know what I mean? I'm like scared to do that. But either way, I get a lot of use out of this palette. There's quite a few metallics and I just really love it. There's just so many textures in here and you can't go wrong. The packaging is sturdy. It has a nice mirror. I took it with me to New York. That was my palette of choice. I went to see The Phantom of the Opera on Broadway and I took it with me and I wore it and I was so happy with Loving it. Having a new brow product. This is from Rare Beauty. This is the Rare Beauty Shape and Fill Duo. I'm surprised I like this product. It really shocked me in my testing new makeup from sephora there is a brush that comes with this little con i don't know i love the packaging i was so like hooked on the packaging in that video but i actually had a subscriber tell me that there's even more to it you could actually take this apart and there's a spoolie inside that is so innovative guys i am so impressed with this not only like is it the packaging really innovative like the whole concept innovative but this is a really great formula it is a powder and i like that you get two shades i kind of like to use this one in the inner part to make it lighter and then the this one to fill the rest it is for a more natural brow look which i've been actually into on a daily basis obviously most of the time though i will use like a brow pencil because it's just faster for me using a powder takes a little bit more time because i feel like i'm digging up a lot of product but the formula is really nice because it's really nice and soft but it's not too soft that it's gonna like take you an eternity to fill your brows and i really do like it and i just think that this is so innovative and travel friendly this is also gonna last you forever it doesn't look like it's a lot of product but you're not gonna use all this product i promise you like it's so awesome Awesome. I love it. I do have a new foundation favorite and I also tried this in my testing new makeup from Sephora This is a Dior backstage face and body foundation. I've been wanting to try this for years This is not a new foundation by any means whatsoever But I finally picked it up during the sale and I was really glad I did the only thing Okay, like Dior is like a really fancy brand, right? Like it's a luxury brand, but like this packaging is like plastic. It's like really cheap looking, but whatever. The product itself is so nice. I'm wearing it on my face today. What I love about it is that it is super customizable. So you could go from really light, I want to say medium coverage. I think they claim light coverage. Do they claim light coverage? Now I'm not sure. But either way, like you can go from a nice medium coverage to a really full coverage. The only thing is to achieve that full coverage, you need to put on a lot of product, like a lot, a lot of product. It's like your skin, but better. It's not matte, it's not dewy. It's like a perfect in between. And I think this is gonna be my go-to. It's crazy. Next, I have a concealer favorite, and this is actually not marketed as a concealer, but it's marketed as a an under eye tint and brightener. So this is from Milk Makeup. It's the under eye tint and brightener. First of all, this packaging, not a huge fan of it because of how dirty the cap gets. It's kind of disgusting, and it's like a pet peeve of mine. Also, I'm not sure how sanitary it is, but the roller ball does feel really nice under the eyes. It's like really nice and cooling, and it gives like a more brightened effect because of that. The actual formula itself is really, really nice as well. It is really brightening under the eyes. It's actually a lot thicker than I thought it would be when I thought when I read it was a tint. I was a little concerned because I was like, it's not gonna be enough coverage for me, and I like I need at least a medium coverage usually. I don't really like light coverage concealers personally, but this is not light coverage. I would say it's a medium. You could probably build it up to a full. It doesn't look cakey under the eyes and it just brightens up. It gives you like a really nice healthy glow. It's really, really nice. I highly recommend it. Just again, the packaging, you have to like push the button. Not my favorite thing in the world, but really nice formula, really nice product. It does really nice under the eyes and it doesn't crease, which is like the best part and doesn't cake up. It doesn't look disgusting at the end of the day, which is exactly what I look for. I also have a new powder favorite. <laughs> this is not new by any means, but this is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I love this. So this is for under eyes, but I actually used it to set my concealer today entirely and it just does a really great job. It looks really smooth under the eyes. This is the shade light, which is basically like a white, but you can get, there's I think three different options. There's a medium and a dark, but it doesn't come like, there's not a lot of like actual pigmentation that comes out it's not gonna come that doesn't leave a white cast is what i'm trying to say geez i could say words i promise but it looks really nice under the eyes it just sets everything really nicely it smooths really nicely it blurs it does exactly what the name says and that's all you need to know i'm not sure if pat mcgrath's gonna have another sale this year but if she does i would definitely take advantage and pick up one of these i did pick this up during one of her sales throughout this year it was a long time ago and i just got around to trying it out honestly which yeah i'm glad i did really really nice powder i have another eyebrow product that i kind of forgot to talk about when i was talking about rare beauty this is the shaping wax from patrick ta i really like this this is in the shade clear but i do believe they have some other shades i tried the ColourPop brow wax recently as well and i don't like it as much for some reason this is like just waxy enough it's not too waxy like it doesn't make your brows hard or stiff 
but it actually just shapes them the way you want them to. And I also really like the brush that it came with. This actually doesn't have great reviews on Sephora for some reason, but I really like this product and I cannot get enough of it. It looks really good on my brows. It just keeps my brows in place really nicely. Again, no harder crunchy feeling, which is exactly what I look for in a brow wax. So definitely recommend it. I have a bronzer favorite and I tried this in my testing to make it from Sephora as well. This is the Huda Beauty Glowish bronzer so this is from her glowish line this is the shade medium which i thought was going to be too dark for me but it's not so this is more of a warm tone bronzer it's like an actual bronzer it feels really really like interesting so when you look at pictures of this you think it's like a putty i don't know why like i thought it was a putty but it actually like it's not a putty but it's like a soft powder it almost feels a little wet but it's not it's not like wet wet and it's just so warm toned that i don't generally like warm tone bronzers i wish this came in a cool tone bronzer but then i realized hello huda beauty has a warm tone bronzer already in her line this is the tantor one of my favorite cream bronzers of all time look at how cool tone this is so i like pairing these together i did that today and it looks so so good with one another like i've been doing that so much lately this is such a great formula though it just glides on with ease and it blends out super easily it's not intensely pigmented which i really like a bronzer because you could build it up even for a medium shade it doesn't like make me look dirty or anything like that i was worried that i picked up a shade that was too dark for me because i'm pretty fair but medium works really well for me like it doesn't it's not so intensely pigmented so i build it up really nicely after going in with the tantor because the tantor is really nice it's meant for my contour so i use this as a contour and then i use the glowish bronzer as an actual bronzer just to give some warmth to the skin and it just looks so pretty the last makeup item i'm gonna be talking about is from patrick ta this is the major headlines blush palette couldn't remember the name of it i don't know hopefully this is still available i know that this was limited edition it's like a holiday release hopefully he actually brings it back because it was so well received i think everyone really liked it and i think it would be wise of him to put it in his like permanent line i believe this released in october i just had so many things going on obviously i couldn't really try it out until november and i've been using it non-stop this is the blush palette that came with me to puerto rico and new york just you get so many options in here you get three brand new blush shades in patrick Ta's line so they're never before seen you get the creams on top and the powders on the bottom absolutely love them they're really great formula the creams just blend out with ease i was a huge fan of his blushes before like i have the she's so la blush and i actually have his original blush that doesn't really get talked about a lot it's like a single blush and it's a powder blush like it's like nobody talks about it but i really like that formula as well i think he does blushes so well like that is going to be what he is known for so if you haven't picked this up yet and it's still available either on the patrick Tower website or on sephora i highly recommend you pick it up oh wait i do have one more makeup product talk about i forgot about this how could i forget so this is actually a lipstick this is from the ColourPop and nightmare before christmas collection which i didn't actually try until november either it's crazy this is the oogie boogie shade this is like the nude so this is the one that's on my lips obviously i actually love this color combo this lip combo so i went in it went flying everything goes flying when i'm talking fast this is the color pop lippy pencil in the shade ctrl it is a really nice dark deep brown and then i love going in with oogie boogie in like the center obviously and it just is a really beautiful color combo this is more cool toned like the lippy pencil is more cool toned whereas this is a little bit more warm tone i don't know i just love the combination i've i'm always into that ombre effect if you like that then i definitely recommend this combo i really like the formula of this lipstick as well it is creamy and super creamy and comfortable on the lips it's not not matte it's not too like sticky or glossy or anything whatsoever it's just like nice and creamy and hydrating it makes your lips look healthy and it's really pretty on its own by the way i, I don't think i mentioned that it is just a really nice everyday nude and i think it'll suit a lot of skin tones as well and the last thing in my november favorites is a new fragrance this is skylar vanilla sky i love this fragrance if you like vanilla you'll obviously like this i actually bought this because it was I didn't actually buy it. I got it with my reward card from a fragrance sample set. If you ever see the fragrance samplers at Sephora and you see a fragrance that you think you might like or you go on and you sniff them and you're like, oh, I might like this, I recommend purchasing that because you can trade in your card for a full-size fragrance, which is exactly what I did for this. So basically, I paid $60 for that fragrance sample, which was a lot if you think about it, but this is worth more than that so you get it on a discount basically so i really like the scent because it is very vanilla -y. If you have to like vanilla to like this vanilla sky has the top notes of cappuccino pure vanilla and caramelized cedar so it's not straight up vanilla it smells like a little bit like yeah coffee but then like a bit musky as well in like the undertones of it it actually reminds me of a fragrance i used as a child it was like vanilla fields or something like that i don't even know if they still make it it is very vanilla heavy it is a very fresh scent i would say this isn't the most appropriate appropriate scent 
for this time of year. Personally, I like a more deep, grungy, musky scent for fall and winter. I don't know. I, I do associate fragrances with the time of year, but if you don't and you just want a nice vanilla scent, I highly recommend that one. And yeah, okay, that completes this video. Let me know what you were loving throughout November. I would love to know. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so, so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Also, during 25 days of... And secondly... This is the, the, this is the, next I have a concealer favorite. This is actually not marketed as 